Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell. And of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual studio with a very interesting man by the name of Dr. Fred Moss. Fred, how are you, brother? I'm good. It's good to be here, Jay. Thanks for having me. It's awesome to have you guys uh, have you here, Fred. And let me give you guys his bio real quick. A holistic psychiatrist right up the alley of J. Campbell listening audience, serving in many capacities uh, as a speaker, a psychiatric, ex psychiatric expert, witness, telehealth educator, mental health coach, and an aspiring filmmaker. I think COVID <laughs> kind of turned that around, but he is a very interesting cat, very eclectic, doing a lot of things. He has an extreme desire to help people which has been the force leading him to various settings and roles as a psychiatrist over the years and compelling him to continually look for better, more effective ways to provide the highest quality care. He actually is a psychiatrist who's checked out of the allopathic treatment model. So we're going to get into that, but uh, definitely amazing person behind Find Your True Voice. His book is Find Your True Voice, which is findyourtruevoicebook.com. And he's also now the architect behind the We The People Summit which is actually he's starting uh, to do right now or the first one is coming up. So Fred, um, as I like to do, you what? Say it again. It's the second one. We've already had one. So we have in three. This is the second oh, my, one. My apologies. So the second no one, so the second one and the third is coming. Um, so as I like to do on this podcast right now, uh, because of obviously we're in a very strange, uh, amazing time to be alive world, but obviously depending on your perspective, it could also be, a very uh, interesting time, um, you know, from a negative perspective with all the things that have happened in the last two and a half years. But in your take or your insights, uh, this podcast is obviously being filmed on May 12th, 2022. Where do you see humanity going over the next three to five years, you know, knowing that we find ourselves obviously in a very precarious situation from a health crisis standpoint to uh, you know, just a place where, you know, obviously everybody knows we're kind of on the precipice of economic, uh, you know, change, collapse, however your perspective is. But where do you see humanity going in the next three to five years? Hmm. So thanks for starting off with such an easy question. I think that, <laughs> That's a Jay Campbell know, I, podcast. I understand. So he, here's the thing. I, you know, I don't really I, I don't claim to have a knowledge of any type of uh, clairvoyance of how things are going to go in the next three or five years, because I certainly uh, even each and every day, I'm kind of surprised that I get to wake up to a day where I get to enjoy the freedom of being married to the love of my life, of having three of the most amazing cats in the world of living um you know living in a space where if i look out the window or take a walk i get to live in in ecstasy and beauty beyond belief nice and i get to have friends and be actually speak my honest true self on uh conversations and sometimes being broadcast to broad audiences like yours or you know and get to teach and get to learn and get to meditate and work out and eat great foods it would sound like it's heaven wouldn't it yeah for sure. That's pretty, ha pretty heavenly. And all of it is true. Yeah. I'm not making up. That's, that's not, that's putting, that's not putting a spin on anything. That's just the facts. Now we start looking at how things are unfolding in, uh, in the world, in our community at large or in a larger community, or we start looking at, uh, you know, maybe our city or our state or our country or, our region or the world and things get a little bit more dicey. I, you know, I, I have to somehow get to the idea that I need to trust humanity to walk itself through this in such a way to leave minimal damage. And um, boy, I have a hard time with that. I really but think so I was just literally going to ask you. So do you, so do you, are you a, are you a negative future prophesizer or are you neutral? Mm-hmm. <laughs> negative and neutral are my two choices. <laughs> uh, that, that's interesting. I would say um, uh, there's a, there'll be a storm before it gets better. So that's beautiful stated. There's darkness before the dawn. Uh, I agree with you, man. I mean, I'm a, I'm like you. I live in you know south of you, where it's blue sky 325 days out of the year. I have absolutely no smog. I'm at 1800 feet. I look out the backyard and I have uh, the vineyards. I meditate for 45 minutes every morning with my dog Thor, who's laying next to me, my spirit animal, uh, you know, literally basking in my energy. And so I, my life is amazing too. You know, I'm a big student of Neville Goddard. You know, you create your own heaven on earth. 
Um, but it is interesting, you know, when you look around, like you said, and you said it very eloquently, um, these are precarious times for many people on this planet. Yeah. And, you know, it does take a person, uh, you know, to do the internal work, right? I like to say the way out is within. Uh, and, you know, now we find ourselves on this planet where there's just too many people that are caught up in the externalization of anything and everything, right? Like their savior's coming, you know, whatever it is, it's not them. They don't look within, they don't look to, you know, improve upon themselves. And I think that's kind of, you know, the model almost of any person, you know, on planet earth is if you, if you truly want to, from if you're walking the spiritual path, that's kind of the way I like to say it, you know, you really do have to examine yourself and, the first step is self-awareness. And I think a lot of people today, because again, of, you know, whatever excuse we want to give it, whether it's pop culture, the mainstream news technology, it keeps people from doing that. Very, very few people are into self-examination, mm -hmm. you know, and they're so caught up in the rat race and paying their bills and buying things. And, you know, the whole, it, it, again, it's just the whole, you know, the, the rat race, I guess, of material culture. And so very few people, really do that, you know, what I would call internal work job of checking in and, you know, whether it's meditation, introspection, contemplation, grounding in nature, there's so many ways to sit there and, you know, observe stillness or, uh, you know, mind silence again to, to become centered. And I just think that it's not, it's still not happening at a rate that it should. And, and there's so many people like yourself uh, and many others who are talking about this day in, day out. I mean, again, you're a trained professional mental health expert, a psychiatrist, you know, uh, it's, 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 it's just mind blowing. I mean, you know, w we can jump into the points, but do you have, did you want to add anything to that? Well, I, I, I you know, it is, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's the kind of thing where, uh, I don't really feel like I have access to what the future holds, but one, uh, <sighs> one possible outcome that I think is fed to us as a likelihood is some degree of mass chaos mm -hmm. uh, between, you know, that, that uh, somehow the levy breaks or somehow, right. you know, somehow with the economic collapse that you mentioned or sure. with, you know, mental health collapse or with, uh, you know, that people finally have had enough and that there's some sort of, you know, breakdown in human society, e even caring about each other. So we end up being our greatest enemies. Um, you know, that's the big concern is that is that uh, if we don't do anything, we're going to get the life uh, that's that's been served up to us. And that's a the future looks at least uh, somewhat grim uh, between mm -hmm now and should we continue to survive you know what's on the other side of this might be something indeed you know and i hear many people speaking to this and be, be something much more liberated and available than we've ever had before um although it's easy to look down this rabbit hole that you talked about before and see that uh, at least one pathway isn't towards greater freedom it's towards uh, authoritarian rule or totalitarianism or um you know, loss of personal freedom or 100% surveillance or, right. or, you know, all those things that make it, um, make it pretty difficult to live into a world that's desirable. It's really so I think, well, so I think to what you just said, and this is great because I already know that this podcast is going to go in different places probably now, but you know, to what, to what you just said, I believe that we all will ultimately create or manifest that the reality that we choose whether it's you know a lot of people want to say deserve uh i i believe that you know to what you were just saying about the author the authoritarian you know orwellian type stuff that like i think that reality comes no matter what i think that that's already forecasted i mean you know if you're going to be a person that wants to check into the metaverse whatever that you know becomes and consciously give away your human rights or your humanity or whatever you want to look at it, your human beingness, then you will be able to choose that. But if you're somebody that, you know, doesn't want to do that, you know, doesn't want to give into that techno technocratic or that technocracy or whatever you want to call it, where, like you said, it's just constant surveillance. Uh, I believe that that world would materialize too. I, I already know, I know you do too. I know tons of people building separate timelines and separate, you know, uh, plans and, you know, aspects of existence. And honestly, Fred, you know, if I can call you Fred, uh, sure. a lot of us will probably be living 
amongst each other. You know, I don't want to go all hippie on you and talk about communes, but I mean, I really can see, you know, groups of sovereign, empowered, free human human beings living together in, you know, an ecosystem, whether it's a bunch of farmlands in Northern California or, you know, in Ecuador or Costa Rica or Belize, where we are, you know, we've opted out. We're not yeah. in that game or that system or whatever you want to call it anymore. But I mean, you know, you said it best. I mean, I don't know how we get away from that. I mean, it's already in place. It's already in plans. China lives like that. Look what they've done to Australia. Look what they're doing to Canada. I mean, it seems like that's coming probably to every, you know, first world, you know, quote unquote, civilized, you know, autocratic internet of things, you know, uh, country or nation state. I, I don't know how we get away from that. So I would just say that I am totally a glass half full dude and I see the golden age, the new earth, but that maybe have to be created separately than the current system. Hmm. Well, uh, you, you, you may be right. And, you know, that seems like uh, all, all uh, indicators point to what you're saying being um, a very, you know, almost a inescapable and obvious reality that's uh, upon us. Right. Um, when you start leaning on, yes, there could be a miracle, however. Right. Definitely. And uh, and you start realizing that it, if there was a miracle, one that we never, ever, 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 ever imagined coming that then right. comes. Right. Then, uh, you know, we'll look back at these days and we'll be like, oh, yeah, we were pretty scared or, oh, yeah, we were yeah. pretty concerned. Oh, yeah, we had it going in a different direction. But then it, then the thing happened. Right. Um, right. Whatever that thing is. And 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 the thing can happen. You know, that's the thing is that is yeah. it, it in the history of miracles, at least as documented that we usually use to uh, to, um, you know, spawn our parables uh, from the books right. And the great big books that have been written over time by humans or not, um, the, the, uh, you know, the idea is, is that, is that these, these things have predicted or have created events that were far beyond any human imagination as being right. even possible or, um, or likely. And that, you know, when you start leaning on, well, we need one now. Right. Like, you know, can we cash in our chips and get a miracle now? Right. Right. Uh, maybe that is where we're at. But I, I got to tell you, when you start leaning on a miracle as being the only answer that leads us away right. from mass painful chaos. Right. Um, we're in extraordinary times. Hope is not a strategy. And, you know, to what you're saying, though, you know, and I know, you know, this guy and, you mm -hmm. know, the, the, the reality is, is that all it takes, you know, the hundredth month monkey syndrome is enough people vibrating above the line of integrity, you know, like in the reason, uh, you know, a little bit above reason where we could shift, you know, planet wide, the idea that we are separate, you know, individuals, not all, you know, coming together for the aspect of, you know, we get really spiritually woo woo here uh, because we are all, you know, unified at a soul level in some conscious way, you know, life is sentient life is connected in that way, especially in this ecosystem of planet earth. I think you're right. I mean, you know, I have friends, you know, that are very, you know, as you do too, you know, they're very fundamentalist, you know, Abrahamic adherents. And, you know, they talk about the biblical stuff and how we're now in the days of the tribulation and, you know, that, that people are choosing sides, you know, and, you know, you're either, uh, you know, of the light or you're not, and, and everybody gets a choice and it's all happening in a way that, you know, we can't really, it, it's it, like you said earlier, it's impossible to predict. We, we don't really know how the future will be decided, but it does seem like we're, we're, we're all individually being given a choice now, you know, and mm -hmm. you can, as I like to say, you can choose resonance, you know, in your outcomes and your behaviors and the way you serve creation and what you do every day, or you can choose dissonance and, you know, choosing dissonance is kind of like living in fear. And as you know, Fred, being a psychiatrist, a lot of people, and I kind of want to ask your opinion or your, your insights on this. I mean, I've seen some very aberrant behavior in the last four to six months from people who seemingly have been pushed beyond their, you know, sanity, you know, with the masking, with the V, you know, with the 
strict standards and all the nonsense that everybody has observed or had to be, you know, dealing with. I mean, think of all the family collapses of the last year and a half because, you know, some person chose not to and some person did. And there's just been so much, you know, uh, confusion, you know, with everything that's happened that it's interesting. I mean, do you feel that some people, and I should probably give you a little bit more clarification of what I'm talking about. Um, but do you feel that some people are permanently like altered from the last two years? Uh, you know, things that have happened, like, I mean, literally like from a sanity standpoint, like they've shifted where the fear is so great now in them that they can't ever come back. Hmm. <clears throat> well, you know, again, we lean on miracles and I've seen miracles in the world of, uh, you know, sanity or insanity and the whole idea of where sane becomes insane or insanity becomes, you know, certifiable is uh, a deep question that I've dealt with for many years before, right. you know, before this. Um uh, I come back to what, I mean, is my next question, you know, they can't come back to what, 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 do, you, what do you want them to come back to? Okay. So I'll give you, well, I'll give you an example the other day and I didn't observe this, but my, my good friend did, he told me about this. We were talking, I don't know, a month and a half ago about this woman that comes into a cafe that he goes to every morning and she's a young person. She's like 20 years old and she wears her mask, you know, very sealed. She's got two masks and a face shield and she eats in this cafe. And when she goes to eat, she lifts up the face shield, the second mask and the first mask, and then she rushes the food into her mouth and then she pulls it back up over her face and pulls down the face shield and chews. And, you know, wow. this, yeah, but this guy, he's a friend of mine, you know, he's also an influencer and a podcaster was like, I didn't really know what to do. I wanted to walk up to her and I wanted to comfort her. I wanted to, you know, be human, but he realized that like, there are a lot of people who have been pushed to that, right? Mm -hmm. Again, from the last two years. So I guess kind of, you know, if I can give you, you know, some context with that, are those people, like, where are they? Like, what is their state of being? I mean, to me, that would be a person who's literally in such fear. They're such locked up in autonomic nervous system, fight or flight, you know, high cortisol, Severe fear. I mean, just they're just living in absolute abject fear. I mean, like, you know, what does that project for that person? And then, you know, how many other people are like that? You would seem that there must be a lot of people like that. Well, it, there there are enough people like that. That is, a, you know, a pretty extreme case. But she's pretty sure what she's doing is right. Yeah, right, right. And she's actually as sure about being right as you are. Right. Right. And she's not less right than you. She's just her. Right. And if you were her, you would be doing exactly what she's doing. Right. And she, all things considered through whatever her education experience and, you know, and thought process is, um, what she's doing makes the best sense for her. She's making the best decision for herself. Um, I too feel the same thing. I would love to comfort her. I'd love right. to speak with her. I'd love to, you yeah. know, kind of, and then it's like, well, which one of us is in more discomfort? Right. Right. Is she in more discomfort than us? Or maybe she's actually found a space that leads her to some maximal level of comfort in a right. weird way. Yeah. So Welcome to Humanity is the brand that got developed six or seven years ago, and it got developed as a natural correlative, uh, cor correlation to things like this, you know, things that would otherwise be um, considered maybe sick or defective or afflicted or affected or deficient or, you know, uh, like maladjusted or sure. abnormal. And I really started, and I started many years ago, more in 2006, to, to attempt to mm, take in all of humanity for what it is, including things that are a little bit on the edge, like this, like this sure. woman you're speaking of. Yeah. Can we embrace, appreciate, love, respect, uh, forgive, accept, and have compassion right. and gratitude for all of our human brothers and sisters? Beautiful 
who are doing whatever they're doing to deal with whatever they're dealing with at their own rate and own knowledge base. Can we do that? Because once we start pointing fingers at this woman's lost or sick or insane, right, or right. Uh, then we become part of the problem instantaneously. Beautiful, my brother. That's why you're on the podcast. <laughs> I mean, that's an amazing answer. It's, I, I mean, I agree. I mean, I mean, you know, it, 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 it's cliche, but it does come back to unconditional love. You know, it's yeah. compassionate eyes. It's empathy. You know what I mean? It's not sympathy. You don't want to sympathize. It's empathy and compassion and unconditional love. That's really what it is because you're right. I mean, like all of us have our own, you know, uh, skeletons in the closet or, or, you know, issues that we deal with. And so, you know, looking at that one person, you know, speaking of that woman, um, you know, you can't generalize because you're right. I mean, you know, everybody is reacting uh, according to their own ways and means. So, you know, again, I mean, a, a great answer. It's just, it's, 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 it's unfortunate. I think, and again, from my opinion and my opinion only that, you know, the world has transformed so fast in the last two years, you know, due to the circumstances that we've been given. And I, and I know, I don't think that they're, I mean, again, you can look at, you know, things from a glass half full or glass half empty perspective, but, um, let's just put it this way. Like everyone, in the last two and a half years has been forced to re-examine. And as you know, my wife likes to say, adapt and pivot in some capacity. And it's the people that are most able to quote unquote, adapt and pivot and change, you know, with new uh, criteria, parameters, experiences, or whatever that are going to best, I would say, make it into whatever is coming. Maybe. So, you know, that, that might be true. Uh, you know, all that happens is that we, those of us who have adapted and pivoted to living a life of some degree of compensatory um, joy, pleasure, broadening, enlightenment, uh, you know, that we have somehow found ourselves uh, tripping into a life that is actually um, even more in the same, in many weird cases, even more rewarding than life ever was before this, uh, before the lockdown. Um, maybe all we really did was, uh, enter, uh, big leagues, like enter the next major leagues where the, um, where the, uh, um, you know, where the fastballs come faster, where the pitches come, the curveballs curve harder, the screwball the off the table. Like, like, you know, like there's a new level of game we're about to play. You may think you're all big and ready. Maybe, maybe you are, but uh, the game's about to get a whole lot tougher. And all you did was earn the right to play in that game. Right. And, uh, and that game might, might not, you know, might that, that game's going to have a different set of parameters, I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's interesting because, you know, every smart person I speak to in my life right now, if you ask them what's going on, you know, where, where do you put your money? Where do you invest? What about this? What about that? Almost every person that I know right now is kind of like, I don't know. There's no real right or wrong answer. I can't give you any kind of credence or you know, credibility on this or that. So I, 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 I find like for me and, and to what you just said, like, you know, my personal uh, life, both my wife and I as and my kids, and that's all I can really ultimately control anyway, has expanded in the last two and a half years more than at any other point in my life. And at least right. in this life, you know, and I'm 51, my wife's 50. My daughters are, uh, I have three bonus kids and two biologicals, but you know, my, the two biologicals are still with us and they are 12 and 14. Uh, and I have one biological who's a fresh sophomore, excuse me, in, uh, Cal Poly, not Cal Poly, uh, God, I can't even think point Loma in San Diego. She's a whole, mm -hmm. all American soccer player. Amazing. And all of us in the last two and a half years. Yeah. We all dealt with the same stuff that everybody else has dealt with, but I mean, our life, you know, has stayed very centered and balanced. You know, we've been very focused on each other. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, yeah. So, I mean, I, I see, you know, it's interesting because again, you have to place your consciousness in an area, a place where you can control. Right. And, you know, if you, like you said, in the very beginning of this, you know, you see life is grand and, you know, every moment of every day, you wiggle your hands and your feet and your arms and you're grateful 
you know, it's an amazing thing. But, you know, again, you know, we're exp- but we're all exposed to, you know, external stimuli from what we see around us in the media and our phones and the internet and all that stuff and even podcasting. And that's one of your points. And we might eventually get to one of these points at some point, Fred, maybe not. <laughs> but, 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 but the truth is, is that everything is perspective. And, mm-hmm. you know, your perception of everything that is happening is like you said, you know, your own, mm-hmm. just like that woman, you know, feels that she has to protect herself and others in the way she, she lives her life. So you're right. I mean, you can make an argument that, you know, she's not doing that for herself. She's doing that because her perspective is that's the right thing to do to prevent harm to anyone else. So, I mean, that would be the ultimate observation of love and kindness. Yeah, that's a good point. If, if in fact, that's what's driving her entirely, then that is an ultimate sacrifice of self for the service of others. And then that does, you know, that's no longer something to feel sorry for. It's something to aspire right. to. Absolutely. Pretty Absolutely. interesting. Good point. Um, okay. So you got a bunch of great points here. So I'm just going to jump all over the board, but uh, you're mm-hmm. obviously an expert in mental health. So mental illness as a transformable conversation. I think that's a perfect one to start because, you know, we're just sure. talking about what some people would look at and say, oh my God, that woman is, you know, so in fear you know, yeah. she's had, you know, Param- a paranoid. Yeah, or yeah. Or, or, I mean, she's, let's say, you know, again, you can classify it anything you want, but again, from an observational standpoint, external, non-professional, you would say, wow. So mm-hmm. it's, a, it, it, like I said, I think this is a kind of a good seg- segue, but, you know, how do we make this a transformable conversation? Well, you know, more than anything, uh, there's two things that come to mind. More than anything, people really just want to be heard and known for who they are and what they have to say. Like people want to be heard for their true selves. Uh, They want to be listened to and regarded with the respect that they and you and I think that we deserve. And uh, people just really, really, really want to be heard. So, if you're going to have it that, of course, mental illness is a transformable conversation. And, you know, we can start with the fact that it wasn't that it changes definition like, you know, every decade, uh, whatever mental illnesses, new diagnoses show up and definitions of old diagnoses alter to meet the new trends. So, you know, when you have a broken arm, it's broken, whether you're in Tanzania or Arkansas. Right. It's just broken. There's no one's going to say, no, no, that's not a broken arm. Is it? No, it is. Right. It, it, is it, it a is. viral fracture? Is it a compound? Fra- no, I got you. No, it's just a broken arm. You got a broken arm. Now, with mental illness, that's not the case at all. And that's where the aspiring film part of me, filmmaker part of me, really began to uh, take its roots. Um, with Global Madness was going to be a documentary where I had myself being sort of the Anthony Bourdain of mental illness nice. and going around the... Uh, world and various uh, diverse, culturally specific uh, corners of the planet, like um, and and really seeing how the same sort of symptoms or behaviors or thoughts are treated or dealt with in different societies entirely, entirely different right. than each other. And sometimes you get promoted into shaman school, you know, shaman sure. level. Other times you get institutionalized, other you get marginalized, Incredible. or you can get elected, for God's sake. For, for, <laughs> That's the best point right there. You, you know, it's right, it's really true. And 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 you know, so you start seeing that mental illness is simply a conversation, simply a conversation that we then call fact and real. You say someone has bipolar or social anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, schizophrenic or schizoaffective or social or, you know, whatever we want to say, anxiety or depression or, uh, you know, attention deficit disorder or Asperger's or, you know, autistic spectrum disorder. So many different sexy diagnoses out there. And um, we talk about them as if they're real. Right. But they're not. There's of nothing course. real about them. You know, yeah. the day that we actually get to define the word normal will be the day that we get to just talk about what abnormal looks like. Right. But until that day happens, it's just it's ludicrous to be speaking about abnormal behavior if we have no idea whatsoever about a collective definition of what the word normal is. So without normal, you certainly can't go to abnormal, which just means not normal. And if we don't know what normal is, then we can't know what not normal is. Now, 
what are we really looking at here? Well, we, we, you know, in some ways, what we're looking at is that listening and 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 being with another person, and the the idea being that mental illness as a conversation. Mm, Meaning that if I believe that I'm mentally ill and then I get confirmation from a clinician that I'm mentally ill, then I get to say, oh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm an elephant. I went to a doctor. He told me I was an elephant. I'm like, that explains everything. Explains my nose. It explains why I like water so much. It explains why, why I, you know, knocks things off at the, at the, you know, at the uh, China shop. It's all, it's all, it's all, of course I'm an elephant. Thanks for the explanation. And then I walk around, I tell people I'm an elephant. They say, you know what? You are, you are, you are an elephant. I'm a, then I just became an elephant. Right. I've got myself, my confirmed, and my confirmed authority, and now the community. And now I became an elephant. And then I get to live the life as if I'm an element, an elephant. Now, that's how mental illness kind of works, is that we feel like there's something wrong with us. And we go to a doctor actually to get confirmation of that right. being something wrong with us. We don't go to the doctor to learn that there's not something wrong with us. It's actually the only subspecialty in all of medicine mm -hmm. for which if you tell somebody that they're actually normal, they get furious. Yeah. <laughs> That's not what so-and-so told me. And I got a script that says dude, otherwise. Dude, if you think I'm normal, I'm just going to go. Why did I even come to you? Like there's no specialty in all of medicine where people are furious about hearing that everything's okay, except right. in psychiatry. What do you mean? I'm crazy. I'm crazy. I, that's why I came here. If I would, if you, if I could have gone to anybody who told me you're normal, but you could have given me a diagnosis. It's like, well, the truth is, and, and many of the people will just simply go, you know, will storm out of your office and then right. just go find another doctor to give them a diagnosis, which they can find because it's super easy to just say you have anything. You, you want right. to tell me what your diagnosis is, I'll agree with you. That's right. Incredible. So transformative conversations mean like this. If you, if you are ready to consider, now the truth is, let's get this to your listeners. I am not saying that mental illness, if, if you have found a mental illness that actually works for you and you like the treatment that you're getting and it fits your, you know, your overall infrastructure in the community and for yourself, and you're very pleased with how the treatment has gone up until now, you can't imagine it being any better. You know what? More power out. to you. It's just ki absolutely continue down that road, please. Please, I'm not even speaking to you about this. It's completely okay. Right. Like, great for you. If you have found something that's, and this goes for anyone, if you have yeah. found something that works for you in this life, keep going. Absolutely. Absolutely keep going. Now, I am speaking to the really hundreds of millions of people who aren't that happy with the way psychiatry is going aren't that happy with the way their diagnosis or their treatment has gone, aren't that happy with the fact that their life has gotten worse progressively since they got their mental illness. And in that form, what's really called for is resonating and connecting with that human, listening to them like I asked you to listen to mm, this girl in the coffee shop and actually getting them for who they are. Now, right. I don't know about you, Jay, but I think this is, holds true for you. I know that when I've been gotten by another person, when I'm resonating with another person who I actually believe is hearing me for what it is that I'm trying to say, a whole new set of healing sets in at that moment, which far exceeds anything that any antidepressant or anti-anxiety agent or even any therapy can actually produce. There's a healing when we get to be social animals and use our communication in such a way as to resonate and connect with another human. At that point, the conversation becomes thoroughly and totally transformable because what you thought you had, you no longer have to uh, adhere to. You don't have to you don't have to own the fact that somebody told you you had some, you know, some ICD-9 code when really what you have like your your diagnosis. Like, Jay, I do know what your diagnosis is, by the way. I've already figured that out early. I'll be glad to tell you if you want, but it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you regular wages. Uh, you know, I'm going to, I, yeah, I, uh, uh, minus the usual and customary, you know, um, UC, I think it's called UCR, like 
uh, right. usual and right. cuss. I, I forgot what the R stands for. But anyways, we're going to. And that is your diagnosis is J. Campbell. That's your diagnosis. Right. That's the only diagnosis you have at this point, unless you wanted to change your name, then your diagnosis would be whatever that new name was. That's right. And isn't it great to just see each and every human for just being a whole lot like each other and you have something that's different, it's called your name and your path through right. life has been whatever it's been up until now. And once you get that, people who have been walking around for years or decades with diagnoses and then treatments that support or perpetuate that diagnosis are given the opportunity to find their own freedom and walk away without a diagnosis, without a treatment, without medication, and maybe never, ever, ever needing a mental health worker again in order to optimize or to appear to optimize or stabilize any of their life. Beautifully stated. Yeah. I mean, you could go, you know, even deeper and macro and just, you know, like I talk about all the time, like, you know, we're not these physical bodies, right? Like we are literally energy, right? Uh, the Jay Campbell, the Dr. Fred Moss. I mean, you know, those are, like you said, those are just personalities of the mind, the mm -hmm. ego. They're not real. I mean, we're, we really are, you know, energy bodies, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. like, once, once you get to that level of awareness and you really you even go deeper and you understand that energy you know, can't be from a universal law standpoint, can't be contracted, can't be co compacted, continues to expand, you know, then, you know, you're an eternal being, you know, as a consciousness itself. Right. So it's like, you then define yourself as like, I'm not this, like you said, this disease state, this affliction. I mean, I think of, you know, I always think of like my aunt, you know, in talking about what you were doing to make it more uh, personal to people, like, you know, they'll say, Oh, my sciatica. Mm, my sad, okay, and yeah. their entire beingness <laughs> is defined by their sciatica. And then, yeah. as you know, they literally create a, an addiction to their affliction and their body slash mind is based on that drama that they always are attached to because of their disease or their yeah. problem. And and, exactly. and And how many people literally go through their life defining their self by that. And as you said, yeah. so, I mean, like, you know, it, it makes a lot of sense in the mental health arena that it's the same thing. And like you said, that's why people literally are like, what do you mean? I'm not okay. What do you, what, what do you mean? I'm not crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's true. And, and you know, people, when you look, if I could find someone or something else to blame for how many times I make very clumsy or even damaging decisions, right? hurting other people, hurting myself, causing damage, cause, you know, being shameful, being blameful, being regretful, being resentful. If I could actually pass that on to a condition or maybe to you, Jay, maybe right. I could actually blame you for all the shit that I do when I'm making mistakes, you know, I'm like, well, that's not actually me. That's a direct function of Jay Campbell yeah. and, and my disease state, which is I have bipolar disorder or I have attention deficit disorder, <laughs> or I have PTSD or I have major depression or right. I have schizoaffective disorder, narcissistic personality disorder, autistic right. spectrum disorder. Right. It's like when I can give that to something else, well, then there is some relief there. I get to shirk the responsibility for being the author of my pitiful life. That's right. The, and the truth is, my life is pitiful. I, I make freaking mistakes that, that hurt people. And I'm like, wow, you know, that was not good. I, I hurt my kid or I hurt my wife or I hurt my friend or I hurt that stranger. Um, and at that point, there's so much, you know, I give myself so much noise and if I could have somebody say, you know what, Fred, that wasn't you who did that. That was actually your ADD. I'd be like, oh, hell cool. yeah. I'm not <laughs> fat. I'm not fat. It's not, it's the food that they give me. That's yes. the reason. That's right. That's right. When I can give that up, when I can give up the authority I have over my life. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Right. That's what we were built to do. We are exactly. so afraid of, of being wrong. And we have such a difficult time 
when we are, you know, so advanced or so evolved or so enlightened <laughs> and we still make like the stupidest shitty decisions here and there. Like I have a couple today that I have made already and they're eating at me right this minute. They, right. No kidding. I'm not even making that up. They are eating yeah. it. Like in order to stay, in order to stay present with you, about three times during this conversation, I've had to move those out of my yeah. They have showed up in my mind. Like, what am I going to do? The survival do? programming ego is always battling for position. Yep. And, and it's had it a few times in this conversation where I'm like, oh, I better shoot just listen to Jay here because that's not, I'm on the air and, you know, that's not, I'm not going to speak to that thing on the air. So I better just get, I'll get back to this other. Fred, I have to be truthful with you. I have not had any of those, but that happens all the time, but you're compelling. So that has not happened to me, but continue. Yeah. I would tell you if it was, because you were honest with me that it was with you, but I have not had any of those yet. Oh, okay, good. Well, I'm glad that it's a singular experience and, um, <laughs> you know, and maybe I should go see a psychiatrist and find out if there's something wrong with me. <laughs> Fred, you're fucking nuts, bro. I know it's true. <laughs> you have no idea. You think you're saying it and like you're the first guy who's ever said it or something, but you're not. <laughs> I gotta ask. That's funny, just to say that we have awesome chemistry. By the way, do do you um has you have you ever had a patient say that? Look, you're more fucking nuts than I am. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I have. You you know, uh, in fact, I think that's where the capitalization of this welcome to humanity comes from. Is right. the idea that really getting with everybody? Look, I have had. I have had such jay my life has been just illustrious i've had of course i've had you know i've probably lived four or five lifetimes in these 64 years i've been all over the world and i've been you know in many power positions i've made some brutal mistakes i've been married a few times i have these two amazing kids i got those three cats i talked about i'm with alexandra is my wife now and it couldn't have asked for a better human to be you know to be the only one i get to it see has to be an amazing human to live with you bro come on she is so she's she's responsible for the fact that I'm so openly and honestly fucking nuts. So that's but good dude, too. You're amazing. I, but by the way, just so you know, the, <laughs> the universe attracted us to each other because I've had the exact same experience three times. My current wife is the gift of all gifts. Help raise my two daughters. Um, so I'm with you, man. Continue. Yeah, and 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 you know, I I in that time. You know, for what it's worth, I've uh, I've I've been in some dark spaces too, yeah, me too some man. really cold spaces. Some like like there's no way I'm getting out of this kind yep. of spaces. Yeah, I I attempted to take myself out at 41. There you go. Ago. Thank you, yeah. thank you for being honest about that. And yeah. and and you know, sometimes that just appears to be the only move left. Yeah, you know, right. and we have yeah. that as being frankly a failure. It's you know, I have another conversation with another person. It's like, well, what if that isn't a failure? What if that's just another state of affairs that you have to walk through? Right. And you could take yourself out. We can all do that. The mechanics yeah. of taking yourself out are not that difficult. No. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really, if you, if you want to, if I would like, you know, pay your estate a million dollars for you to take yourself out today, I, it's not that, it's just not that hard right. physically to take yourself out. Right. But the, the idea is when you get, when you really get that, I what I do get to bring is my privileged experience as one who has been around the world, who has had 40,000 patients, who has looked at this stuff openly and honestly, who, um, you know, do, I, I do have for what it's worth. I have a very, very impressive educational background and. I'm also a two time college dropout. I've also been homeless. I've also collected food stamps. I've also, you know, taken drugs. I've also, I, I, I've done, I've done, I, I've made deep errors in my life. And there's, it's like, let's start there and communicate effectively. Who I really am is I'm a why, I'm wise now, at least comparatively. Right. I'm a right. bit more sage. I'm a bit more wise, but it only comes with the honest notion. That I don't know anything. Exactly. Well, I mean, you got to get to a place of knowing that you know nothing. It's really, do you do? And it takes a long time. It takes, well, look, I don't even call it mistakes anymore because I just call it observation <laughs> coming from a neutral awareness perspective, right? Like when you can go back and look at the mistakes that you've made. I mean, I attempted suicide. I mean, I've been three 
dramatic, and by the way, I'm very open about this, but three dramatic dark nights of the soul of my life. And if I can label them as such, and I, they're gifts, Fred. I mean, these yeah, are all sure. the greatest gifts I could have ever received because now it put me in a place of appreciation, of much more gratitude. You know, I'm in, I'm, I'm like you, dude. Like I wake up in the morning and it's like fucking, you know, Putin may send a nuke over the continental shelf of the West and it may go over my head and I'd be like, eh, fuck it. I'm cool. I'm sitting with my dog here in the backyard in nature, listening to the birds saying, you know what? It's been a run, but that's where you got to get to. That's where you have to get to as a human Mm -hmm. being where you're not attached and you don't have preconceived expectations. And when Mm -hmm. you can get to that place, and again, you already know this. I mean, you don't get there by reading a book. No, nope, you don't. You can't read all of David Hawkins' nope. books and show up. It's that, It doesn't work that way. You literally have to have an experiential life of ups and downs. And again, ups and downs is just a definition. It's a label. Yeah. But everything that happens to you is a fucking gift, but you have to get to a place where you can appreciate it as such and mm. not label it as a failure, as a collapse. And like you were saying, like, you know, and that's kind of where I want to ask you, you know, to kind of end this because you and I could talk all day, but like, mm-hmm. Why does society teach people to not be accountable? Yeah. Well, you know, there's a lot of explanations for that. There's the, you know, divide and conquer. You know, why did, why did um, you know, there's a lot of questions even in what types of things were kept as essential during the lockdown? What right. type of, you know, what type of things were wiped off the map as being unessential and what was kept open as essential? Exactly. For instance, exactly, you know, dude. it's really, int- it's fascinating. It's fascinating. It's fascinating. For instance, even though I, you know, I'm not giving my view on this, but it's, it's fascinating that dispensaries were allowed to stay open until like midnight during the lockdown. It's like, wow, it's like, you know, gas stations weren't even open and dispensaries were open. Right. right. It's like, you know, and certainly the churches and synagogues were closed and, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's like, well, this is really, what is the point? The point is, is that without responsibility, we will, you know, the revolution will not be televised. We will not be able to assemble. We will not be able to actually stand up for what <clears throat> what it is we have to say. The greatest threat in the world today is not what we think. It's not the virus. It's not uh, global warming. It's not even racism or sex trafficking. And it's definitely not even the war in Ukraine. Right. The greatest threat in the world today is that we're no longer speaking our true selves. And we, because all right. of those things are going to require us to actually bring our authentic voice forward in order to make a difference or the default will occur. This grim future that we've already predicted that, uh, looks like mass chaos and a dissolution of uh, personal freedom that already right. is being contracted. Right. So we better speak. And that's where Find Your True Voice comes in. You know, the, the book that I wrote is called Find Your True Voice. And you can, if your listeners or your viewers want to get a copy of it, if they like what we've come up to at this point, I think it's a deeper dive into this topic. And they can find it at findyourtruevoicebook.com. And I'll, I'll pay for shipping as well. I'll send a real book to them. And uh, then we'll talk again if that's something they want to speak to about some of the programs that, you know, that I offer for people who are really interested in coming in touch with their true voice and then delivering it effectively into the world. Fred, you're amazing, man. I mean, I, you know, I do a lot of podcasts. Uh, that was one of your topics we didn't get to, but, uh, you and I will touch base. I'm going to give you my cell phone number. Definitely would like to, you know, talk to you again about deeper things. Uh, I'm grateful that you came on here today. You know, I, I would just kind of add that, you know, you shared a lot of you know, what I would call wisdom, uh, and clarity for me right now, it's about, you know, for those of you guys watching the podcast <clears throat> and thank you guys for watching the podcast without you guys, yep. there is no Jay Campbell and Fred Moss, but yep. at the end of the day, each of us now, you said it, the true self, I like to call it the higher self, the, the, the connection to div- divinity, whatever you define as, you know, your spiritual divinity, but the higher self will never let you down. But you can't connect with that aspect of your consciousness until you do that inner work. And, you know, whether it's sitting there meditating, it's sitting in nature in stillness with your dog, whether it's just, you know, quiet introspection or contemplation, that 
you know, again, that connection, that divin to that, that the connection of divinity, that divine aspect of yourself, your true self, your higher self, however you want to, that is all the answers. All the answers are provided there, but you'll never connect to that level of your consciousness unless you do this, you know, what is most people call inner work, mindfulness. You, and, and that's the thing is like, you know, there's so many people like you and I, and there's books now and websites talking about this, but Fred, people still don't do it. We can no, tell it, them it, to it, do it. Look, it ta- I, I, I can be really forgiving of that too. It's not like I, I do it as much as I should. I'm thinking, wow, I didn't meditate yet today and I didn't do my right. breathing exercises. And I instead right. woke up a little later than I wish. I haven't drank as much water as I would like to do. I haven't read the book or written into my book today. You know, there's things I haven't done yet. And, you know, to stop the world and go get mindfulness takes some, takes some courage. Uh, It takes some surrender. It is like, okay, the next 20 minutes, I'm just going to sit and do nothing. And it's going to be a good move. That's right. It takes, it takes something to actually understand the value of that. So yeah. yeah, no, beautifully well stated. Um, so if somebody who's watching the show here today, you already said, you know, where they can go to get your book, but if they want to work with you, they want to, uh, mm-hmm. you know, obviously podcast with you, bring them on your show. What's the best way for them to do that? The best way to get a hold of me is my, uh, my just direct email, Dr. Fred at welcome to humanity.net. And then also my website is welcome to humanity.net. And it's going through some, some shifting. There's some of my, uh, some of my website, uh, uh, handles and then social media. You can find me. I see that LinkedIn is not listed here. LinkedIn is same, same exact, uh, same exact, uh, handle. You can find me there. And if you really want to get a hold of me, you want to please, you know, please get my book. And then, um, we can talk further. Uh, if you're up to some things and you want to be part of this, we, the people summit, uh, movement, this is a summit that we put together all these influencers. We have a number of very high, high, like this morning, I was on the phone with Stephen, Stephen Covey. Nice. Um, and he's pretty awesome. And he's, he's up, awesome. He's, definitely he's up some good stuff. And so he's, he'll be set up this Saturday, but we just had a zoom call earlier this morning. It was phenomenal. And, uh, the whole idea is that these people are all telling us the same thing, which is they found their true voice and that's how they became an influencer. And you can find your true voice, whether or not you have a million followers or a million dollars. You, 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 you can have you can have one follower. It could be your dog and you can be have your true voice and, and your true voice is what's going to change this world. And we need to change this world because if we don't, then we get what we're being served up with here. And uh there's very few of us that see that if we don't do anything, that things are going to be okay. Everyone knows they got to do something. And people really just want a little bit of guidance as to what that is. And at least the first thing I see is come in touch with that authentic self of yours, whatever it takes, like right now. Like right now, you don't need to go move to Tibet. You don't need to live in a cave. You don't need to even go under a Bodhi tree. You just need to chill and find your true self right this minute. And we can help you do that. Dr. Fred, man, you are a powerhouse. Again, I'm grateful, humbled, privileged that you came on here today. So folks, uh, you see all of his handles and his website. Definitely take him up on getting a copy of his book. In fact, I'm going to do that myself. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.